Greetings, my name is Odin from the Odin's Musings YouTube channel, and I'm here on behalf of Ara Crystals. Today I'm going to teach you all about the chenille stitch, which is sort of like a modified version of the herringbone stitch. While you can make it out of extravagant crystals, pearls, and fire polished beads, you can also do this technique with seed beads. You can even have a lot of fun shifting sizes and make a truly stunning piece of jewelry. While this is a beginner-friendly stitch, I highly recommend that you check out the ladder stitch and the herringbone tutorials that we have available as well before proceeding. For this project, we're going to be using two contrasting colors of size 11 seed beads. We're going to use one as an accent, and we're going to use one as the main body. You're also going to need two accent beads that are size 6 millimeters or a little bit larger, just so that we can cover the gaps in the cap. You will also need a clasp of your choice. In my case, this is a lobster claw accompanied by a jump ring. I am using a D-weight white Nymo, but feel free to use a fire line between 4 and 8 pound test. I'm going to be using a size 12 beading needle, but a size 10 should be fine if you prefer to use that. And with all that being said, let us get started. So we're going to start off creating the base ring where we're going to build our chenille stitch off of. This is going to be formed with a two row ladder stitch. So I'm going to start by threading on four seed beads in color A. This is my accent color. I'm going to pull that down, leaving about a six to eight inch tail, so that I have enough room to attach my clasp. Then I'm going to pass back up through two of those beads. And when I pull through, the other two beads will sit right next to it. I'm going to set up for my next stitch by passing down through those next two beads. I'm going to add on two more beads, and then go down the second column of beads so that I form a loop with the two beads attached to it. I'm going to go up to set up the next stitch, add on two more beads, go up the third column to anchor my fourth column. I'm going to add two more columns to make a total of six, add two, go down, since my thread is going down, to add number five, go up number five, add my last two, and since my thread is going upwards, I'm going to go up those two beads. Finally, I'm going to pass down, and I have my base strip of six. I need to purse them around so they form a loop, so what I'm going to do is, since my thread is coming down, I'm going to go up the very first set of beads. So column number one, pull that through so we start to form our circle. Then I'm going to close this gap between number one and number six by passing downward so that we form a thread bridge like so. Then I'm going to jump across and pass back up so that I can set up for my new stitches. That is our base ring, or a total set of six beads. So now we're going to begin our chenille stitch, which is kind of like a modified version of herringbone. So I'm going to add one color B, one color A, one color B. Then I'm going to jump down through both beads of the next column and form my stitch so that I have three beads and one bead pops up. I'm going to continue by passing up through the next bead in order to set up the next stitch. Once again, add one color B, one color A, one color B, jump down to the next column to pull my thread through and attach my next stitch. Go up the next column to set up for the last stitch. Add my set of B, A, B, go down the last free column. And then we'll have our three rows. Now we need to step up to begin the remainder of the chenille stitch. So what I'm going to do is travel up from column number six up through column number one again. And I'm also going to pick up the first color B. Then to finish setting up for the next row, I'm going to pick up color A that's in the point, and I'm ready to begin my next row. So I'm going to add B, A, B, and jump over to the next color A. Pull that through, add another B, A, B, jump through 
the next color A. Add our last BAB and go through the very first color A that we started from. Pull that through. Now we're ready to step up and go to the next row. So I'm just going to do that by jumping up through the next B and A. Now we can start to see one flower has started to form, and we're just going to continue in the same way. So I've got my BAB. I'm going to find the point that is the highest, and that meets the same color A that I'm coming out of. Pull that through to join the gap. Add another set of beads. Go through the next color A, the topmost one. Add our last set for this row and go through the color A that we've started from. Now that we have finished our row, we need to step up by going up the next color B and the next color A on top. And we continue on. Our set of beads have been added. We're going to pass through the next color A at the top and pull through. Add our next set of beads. Pick up the next color A on the round. Add our last set of beads. Pick up the last color A. This is the bead that we've started from. And you can start to see our floral pattern taking shape. Before we continue on, we need to step up. So you pass through the next color B and color A. If you're also having problems with how loose the tension is, you can also just reinforce by passing through all of these beads once more. Just go around in a circle again so that you cinch up the netting. Then go back up to begin your next row. And this one's nice and tight, so if you accidentally pull on some stitches, nothing's going to come loose. So continue in that manner, adding B, A, B, and picking up the topmost A on your stitch all the way around until you've got a good length of beadwork, and then I can show you how to end threads and attach new ones. So when it comes to ending your thread, there's only a few simple steps that we need to take in order to do that. I have finished a complete row, just so that it's easier for me to tell where I started off from, but I did not step up to the next row, so I'm back here in between the two tallest stitches. I'm going to start off by jumping down a row so that I'm through the next color A bead down. I'm going to add in a half hitch knot, so I'm going to pick up the thread bridge between the color A and the next color B, and then pull through until I form a loop with my thread, pass my needle through that loop, and pull tight. Then I'm going to pass down through the next color B and color A and do the same thing. Pick up the thread bridge between the A and the B next over, pull my thread through until I form a loop, pass my needle through that loop, and pull tight. Go down to the next A bead and do it again. I'm going to pass through a few more beads just to hide the knot. Then I can go ahead and clip my tail short. Three knots is generally good enough to be secure, but if you want to add more just for more security and support, feel free to do so. Now to add a new thread, it's basically the same thing except in reverse. So. I want to end up coming out of the top color A bead where our next stitches are going to be. So I'm just going to travel down the path a few beads until I reach my next color A. I'm going to jump up through the color A and the color B with my new thread. Leave about a one inch tail so that I can hold on to something in case something slips. Then I'll add my half hitch knot here. So I pick up my thread bridge. Pull my thread through until I form a loop. Pass my needle through that loop. And we pull tight. Go up through a couple more beads. Add another knot. Up a couple more beads. Add our last knot. I'm going to pass through that color A bead at the top, and I'm ready to continue my thread. I'm also going to clip that tail end, just so I don't have to worry about it later. And from there, I can resume my stitching. 
Now we're going to do a few different things in order to reattach the clasp on this side. We need to set up so that the other side looks like the back here. So we're just going to do the same thing that we always been doing, except we're not going to add our color A beads. So I'm just going to add two color Bs and pass through the next color A. Once more, add two color Bs and pass through the next A. Add two more color Bs and pass through the last bead, color A, that we've started from. This forms a sort of base row of herringbone that we can attach our next stitches to. So what I'm going to do is jump up the next color B bead so that I'm in between the two Bs. I'm going to add two color A's and pass down the next color B so that we form a herringbone stitch on top of that. I'm going to then pass up through the next color B and do the same thing. Two color A's, pass down the next color B. Jump over and pass up through the next color B. Add two color A's and pass down the next color B. Now I'm going to cinch everything together so that it starts to form a tube and I can add my last row. So I'm going to jump over the color B and the color A on the next column. I'm going to go backward and pick up the previous color A and color B, pull that tight, and go back up. I'm going to go down the next color A and color B. I'm going to go up the previous color A and B again, and to kind of pull that tight, so that these two start to purse together. Go back down, pick up the next color B and color A, go back around, and pick up the previous color A and B, so that those purse together. Go back through the next B and A, Go down the next A and B, then go back and pick up the colors B and A. Go down the next color A and color B, pick up the last B and A, go back and pass through the A and B, then move back up so we can add our final row. I'm going to add one last row of herringbone, so I've got two color A's. I'm going to pass down through the next color A, so they sit on top. Move up to the next color A, add two color A's, go down the next one, go up the next color A, add two more, then go down the last color A. Then we're going to move over and pick up the last two beads to add our clasp. With that, I'm going to add my accent bead and my half of my clasp. I'm going to pull that down, go back down through the accent bead, then move over to the next bead as if I've added a herringbone stitch. I'm going to jump up the next bead, go through the accent bead and the clasp again, back down through the accent bead, and then down through the next size 11 color A. Go up the next color A, back up through the accent bead, go through the clasp, back down the accent bead, and through the final color A bead. You can then go back up the next bead and reinforce if you choose so by going up through the next color A, up the accent bead, through the clasp, down the accent bead, and picking up the next color A on the row, going back up 
the next color A, up the accent bead, through the clasp, down the accent bead, picking up the next one, and so forth until you've reinforced it. Then once you've done that, you can add half hitch knots going down to the netting again, and end your thread in that manner. Then don't forget to attach your clasp to your tail end. And that is it for the chenille stitch. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you so much for joining me. You can have a lot of fun with this just by changing the size of the seed beads or even using larger beads such as bicones, rounds, or fire polished glass beads. Keep in mind that if you do increase the size of the bead, you will have to increase the size of the seed beads that you use. For instance, these are 4 millimeters, and I had to use size 8 seed beads and build up from there from a size 11. And that will do it for this lesson. Check down in the description box for a full supplies list, as well as links where you can purchase the materials. And while you're down there, feel free to subscribe to Aura Crystals for updates on new tutorials and design ideas. And if you would like to see more of my work, feel free to check me out on Odin's Musings right here on YouTube or at odinsbeadhall.com.